वेलकम टू एयर नेक्स्ट यूथ टैलेंट हंट प्रोग्राम आज़ादी का अमृत महोत्सव इट्स एन इनिशिएटिव ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया टू कमेमरेट एंड सेलिब्रेट द 75 फाइव ग्लोरियस ईयर्स ऑफ प्रोग्रेसिव इंडिया इट्स रिच हिस्ट्री डाइवर्स पॉपुलेशन मैग्निफिसेंट कल्चर एंड ग्रेट अचीवमेंट्स सेंट एंस कॉलेज फॉर वुमेन इन कोलेबोरेशन विद ऑल इंडिया रेडियो एंड दूरदर्शन कंडक्टेड टूडे अ यूथ टैलेंट हंट प्रोग्राम to speak about azadi ka amrit mahotsav it was a wonderful opportunity for students to exhibit their talents and gave suggestions for making a vibrant india i welcome all the eminent guests who had made this opportunity today and uh, they are also going to look out like how the youth are prepared in this talent hunt program i am also very happy to notice that the youngsters are going to make use of this opportunity in understanding what is this amrit mahotsav how freedom is important how we are going to take it in our lives in our struggles in our future the legendary figures who had inspired us for the freedom struggle and also those who are going to contribute for the development of the nation i welcome on behalf of sister principal dr p amruta our chief guest today air director mr uday shankar sir adp and also one of the prominent figures who is very well versatile and then articulate with a round applause i invite sir my topic for today is my dream india with focus on atmanirbhar bharat my dream india is a country which acts as a lighthouse for the world my dream india is a country which is the most sought after destination in the world in terms of economy uh, education medicine technology art and culture development tourism textiles cuisines etc india is one of the ancient civilization of the world the main aim of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan is to make india self reliant to for it to uh, contribute more to world affairs the atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan was started on 13th may 2020 and the main aim of this uh, atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan is to make india and its citizens independent and self reliant uh the there are five pillars of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan the first one is economy and the focus is on quantum jumps and not on incremental changes the second one is the infrastructure which represents the modern india and facilitates its growth and development the third one is systems with technology at its core the fourth one is the demography which represents the vibrant social and cultural uh, demography of india and the fifth one is uh the demand which means the full and uh, utilization of the demand and supply forces and the government of india also included five components uh, in the economic stimulus package the f- first one is businesses including msmes the second are poor including farmers the third is agriculture the fourth are the new horizons of growth and fifth is uh, government reforms in addition to this we as individuals and collectively can contribute in making india self reliant uh india has come a long way since its independence in its o- to have ach- achieve its overall development uh so we can see since uh india has become a liberal economy it has been a most sought after hub for investments and uh even the 2008 financial crisis could not dim its future prospects and one of the major blow which india and the world is experiencing today is the covid-19 pandemic but still india has shown its grit and resilience in and has paced forward in terms of atmanirbharta and one more uh, opportunity in difficulty can be seen through chinese aggression which made india realize its dependency and made it uh, to walk on the path of self reliancy my future india would be a country which will uphold its ideals and values and remembering the needs of future generation 
my topic is new she a futuristic woman a futuristic view of modern india from childhood every woman faces hurdles that will hinder their education development and advancement because their family has limited resources when it's time to education their family chooses uh, the, to educate the brothers instead of sisters education gives us strength and courage in which women are in the in, uh, women can stand on their feet uh, any article doesn't give incomplete girls education is savitra bai phule savitra bai phule is the india's first female teacher in which in the in the 18th century she has faced a lot of uh, gender dom male dominant system gender society etc i don't think women and girls should uh, should limit them their themselves women it's okay it's okay to make mistake it's okay to fall what important is how you fall and how you get up from the fall thank you today my topic is uh, girl uh, on girl education worldwide 129 million girls are out of school as per the 2011 census the total literacy rate in uh, of india stands at 74% the percentage of literacy rate among women is uh, 64.46% The increase in literacy rate, female literacy rate, is 3.15 percent in 2001. Most probably, Indian woman is dependent on uh, when she is child. She is dependent on her father. She is uh, uh, when she uh, when she get married. She is dependent on her husband. When she is old, she is dependent on her son. We should not be dependent on anyone. So lastly, I want uh, some uh, problems are there like religious hard. Uh, household works extracurricular activities which uh, which uh, in which women uh, women and children get busy and uh, they will be like uh, uh, don't give importance to education so lastly i just wanted to say that uh, i have heard like educate a girl as you educate your son but no educate her because she deserves it she can make her own decisions and stand up for her for herself educate her because it's right it's her right educate her educate her without uh, saying any reason with a uh, reason associated with it educate her because it's her right thank you before beginning i would like to start with a quote she is a woman she is everything the world wants her to be and is everything the world can't have her be my topic for today is new she a futuristic view on the modern indian woman first of all i don't like this title modern indian woman why why do you call modern indian women because women have always been modern and capable enough it's the society that needs to be addressed modern for accepting women for who they are the women have always been talented and capable enough to fight for themselves and that is what today's women draw inspiration from to fight for themselves we need to change as a society she does not need to change she does not to be she does not need to be new the society needs to be modern enough to accept her and if you are not doing that as a society then i don't think any person can survive here leave women women don't need to be equal to men women need women need to be accepted for who they are if she works at home or if she works outside if she is a woman of color or if she is a woman of any religion she doesn't need to be treated differently she needs to be treated for who she is and that is a woman she's why do people whenever we talk about progress about women why do people always associate men with it no we are not talking about men we are talking about women women need to get the rights they deserve it's not about competing with men we don't want to compete with men we are much better than them we can be much better than them what we are talking about today is the women should get what what she deserves and that is what my idea for a woman is that she needs to draw inspiration from the women who have worked hard because of them today we are here the opportunity to share whatever we are thinking I did not prepare a speech on this topic because I am a woman living in today's times. I I should be able to speak what is on my mind and this is one such topic that I can speak about any time even if you wake me up from sleep because I'm I am a woman living in today's time. I have the technology, I have the developments, everything in my hand and I'm very grateful that, for that. But there is still one thing that keeps coming forward in my mind and that is the risk if I go somewhere alone. is that threat to my security and that is what we need to change as a society women don't need to change please educate your men to treat women as they are women are not objects women are women 
So please, we need to consider this as a society where we are going wrong. Women don't need to change. There is a no, there is no need for a new she. There is a new need for a new society and for a modern India. And I'm, and I think that we are very close to it. But still, there are some things that we need to change as a society, and I hope all of us can together work on it. Thank you so much for your time. I'd like to start by uh, saying the def traditional definition of modern. Modern. Modern is a term applied to a person who leaves his traditions, customs, which are forced upon him or her, and follows what his what their heart believes. So basically, someone who leaves their traditions is called modern. But when it comes to women, I'd like to first, uh, I'd like to define, I, I, I had constructed my own definition for modern women. And I'd say that in a few minutes, but before that, I'd like to share five traits and characteristics of modern women. Okay, so first, and each one goes by the letter in the word women. For me, for my better, uh, better remembering and for your relatability. Okay, so first letter is W, W for worth. A strong, confident, and a, a, and a modern woman knows her worth. She works. She knows that she deserves what she works for. She deserves her dreams. She knows that she ca she has the capabilities to achieve what she thinks she can. Second is O, opinionated. Um, I feel uh, yeah. We all know what history has done to women or people who have no who had no opinions. So uh, basically, what I, I'm not trying to tell you all that. Uh, oppose everything that society forces us on. Uh, or don't always resist, but uh, have a, choose a side. If there is a situation, choose a choose a side because you have a strong opinion on that and stick to that because you believe that it is uh, it is true or it is reasonable. Third is motivated and motivating. All modern women that I have been with are motivated and are motivating. I have never seen a woman who have pulled other people down stay motivated. Uh, so that's that's the thing that m strong women do not are not insecure and they pull other people up instead of pushing them down. Fourth is uh, a assertive. Yeah, the best advice that I have heard someone uh, someone give me is to be assertive, being frank and and just asking what you want for your dreams. Strong modern women just ask what they need. Just uh, do not uh, conserve themselves before for asking what they want. They ask it, and if, if it is not given, that is a different thing, but they ask for what they want. Last one is N, naive. Naive means childish, but it also means careless. Ca now, in this connotation, I want to take it as someone who cares less about the situations, about the society. Uh, the studies uh, suggest that whatever we are today, whatever we, however we, we behave, we can change our behavior. Uh, everything we behave is learned and can be unlearned based on motivation and willpower. So basically, if you, if you want to change, if you want to become modern, you can. You, at any point of time in your life, you just have to make a decision. Thank you. Good morning, one and all. Uh, my name is Khatija Abdulazim and I'm a first year psychology student and I'm here to talk about how our youth can help build a nation. Why? Because our country desperately need younger minds and we are running out of time. So youth of today are the future of our nation. They represent the most dynamic section of our population and they, they, their actions uh, contribute immensely for the progress of our nation and a true value of a country can be known by its people it is the intelligence and the work of the people that can progress our nation like India so today I'm going to discuss about three key elements that will help the youth of today to tackle the problems and can help build a nation which I call it the three E's first is education employment and empowerment. So for a country to develop st at a steady pace, we need educated people. The youth should be educated. But unfortunately, at t in today's time, our majority of our people are uneducated. Most of them can't read and write. As of 2021, 287 seven million people are illiterate. That sums up to 37% of the global total. So we should uh, channelize their energy and intelligence in a rightful manner, in a direction. 
so thus we should use the intelligence and the power of youth in a right uh, in a wisely in a right direction and and promote their uh, promote policies frame policies to aim at empowering the youth of today and uh, lastly i would like to uh, point out my opinion on how we can take effective measure, measures to um, involve the youth and grab the attention of youth on this topic so firstly we should make the learning interesting if they learn interest uh, interesting stuff they think about it and they act upon it and involve them in uh, political discussions ask them suggestions ask them to suggest solutions for that topic and involve them in any environmental issue how to tackle that issue uh, and any social issue for that matter and i would like to thank uh, sir for bringing us the opportunity to talk on certain topics for our youth my topic is the new she for the modern india amidst the lot of pessimism and the patriarchal society indian women has never failed to shine be it today or an epoch we will never throw this ravishing accessory that is the confidence indian women has proved in every arena that is so challenging and has a lot of limitations be it astronomy or mining to shine and to bring out the best out of it we are with so much pessimism around us we are blamed we are having a lot of names yet we have always moved forward and this will also follow indian women are not are will not just be modernized in their callings or in clothes but also with their meticulous thoughts they'll move forward and keep proving themselves with whatever limitations that they get to face in the society indian women will become modern with every uh, po- opportunities that they get and with every opportunity they'll prove that they are parity with men and they will say they will prove that they are the best with whatever uh, chances that they get to prove themselves also so i believe that the new modern women the new she will not just be very conservative but will bring up with new dream and work hard to achieve it she will uh, be very strong and make sure that she is confident enough for the new india and she'll bring up the country's development to the next level thank you here today i am to speak about few words on girl education or more precisely the importance of girl education i would like to start with a question why do we need to emphasize the girl education so here is it's the answer that there is no other greater pillar of stability than a free educated woman so the first thing i would like to start is why the girls are go to school so the first reason is poverty many people in india which are mostly of middle class or lower middle class families they give preference to boys because they think that boy will take up will look after the family and not the girl she is just going to get married but we need to change this stereotype the second reason is gender biased violence now at this instant i would like to give an example of acid attacks now let us take an example if if i face an acid attack i will not attend the institution or my college with the same enthusiasm which i used to attend before it's right i will not attend the places with the same enthusiasm i will feel that people will think weird of me and they laugh at me so this is one of the barrier which stops girls from going to school one more reason is child marriages as of now it is declining nowadays but still there are few rural areas where child marriages are still prevalent if girls are married at an early age they have to look after their in-laws their family and they lose the opportunity of going to school lastly i would like to conclude with what we are going to do to educate a girl we need to change the mindset we need to break the stereotypes and we need to educate the girl many organizations work under this to help the girl child to get educated i would like to conclude with a statement be the creator of your destiny This is the message to all the girls present here. Thank you. Thank you very much. My topic is New She, a futuristic view on the modern Indian woman. On the night of 15th May, 
1984, Bajendri Pal was awoken by something hitting her in her camp. She was engulfed by a large mass of snow. An avalanche had hit her group of mountaineers on their expedition to the summit of the Mount Everest. Despite this, she carried on. More than half of her team abandoned this event, but she carried on and faced the harshing and uh, frighteningly cold conditions of the Everest. And on 23rd May 1984, she created history by becoming the first Indian woman to reach the summit of the Mount Everest. Now, statistics say that, that if women participated at par with men in the Indian economy, the, Indian eco the GDP of India would increase by 60%. That is $2.9 trillion. Despite being half the population of the world, women still go unnoticed, underrepresented, and are disregarded. In spite of this, women like the aforementioned Bachendri Pal and many, many others wage through the hurdle set by the patriarchy and excel in any field that they choose. So now just imagine what women could do without the shackles of patriarchy and hurdles that are set for them. They would surely be excelling in anything that they choose. They would surely be a force to be reckoned with. We all want equality, yes. But I think to reach equality, we need equity. Women need to be pushed up with the same, if not more, amount of force that they were pushed down with for centuries. More women should be in the decision-making roles of the government. Gender sensitization should be a mandatory subject for all. Digital and financial literacy should be taught to young girls at, in their school as part of their core subjects. Women at any age or stage of their lives should be encouraged to get an education. When I look in the future of India, in hopefully not so distant future of India, I see a woman taking a leisurely stroll down her street at night without the fear of being assaulted, raped, or murdered. I see a woman effortlessly running her family with her partner without having to fear the comments of society about how she's a working woman. I see a family erupting in joy when the news of a girl child being born is said. I see a society which does not equate ideas of equality with being immodest or too forward. I, s I look forward to a future where the future generations will look back at us in awe as to how disparaged women were and how they fought through those battles. This is the new she. This is the woman who I want to be. This is the woman which every woman wants to be. And hopefully, just hopefully, one day, we will all be her. Thank you. Here I am today to speak about the most important topic from the past till the present day, that is girl education. India is one of the most populated countries, and still there is low rate in the girl education. I don't, I was a little bit uh, troubling to see such figures because here the girls are treated as the goddesses and this is a very bad thing to see such a low, low rate in girl education. In ancient times, girls are not allowed to step out of their houses. Even they were not allowed to do what they want. Such a st situation is due to discriminations and blind beliefs, gender assassinations, etc. Still, such situations are continuing in many ways. The first way I feel is poverty. Due to poverty, many parents are not allowing their children to move out for their schooling. And this poverty is making many parents to send their children to workplaces instead of schools. They were of the view that if a girl goes out and she, uh, she would work, she will get income and this will help them in uh, financial statuses. And so they were not even uh, sending children, e even though many schools are giving them free educations. And the second thing I feel was um, uh, low, uh, school, low schools in uh, rural areas. Many rural areas are not having their schooling properly. And so many children are moving very far kilometers uh, by walking for their schooling. And this, uh, this is making a point in the parents' mind that a girl going such far distance is not safe for her. And this is creating a very uh, pan, uh, pandemic thought in parents' minds. And so they were not allowing girls to move out uh, for such a long distance. And this is the major reason, I feel. The third one and the most important one is girls are not um, uh, allowed to uh, have their own thoughts. And they were uh, very compacted to 
what parents are feeling what uh, only they should do that thing uh, example is child marriage many people uh, though they want to uh, go out and uh, educate uh, themselves they were not even allowed to go out because uh, many people many parents are thinking that educate uh, spending money on child's marriage is better than spending money on child's education because they are of the view that if a girl is educated however she have to move to one house at one day and so they are uh, feeling that it is just a waste of money but uh, i feel that the all over uh, solution for all these problems is the only thing is to change the mindset of the people if the mindset of the parents is changed they will stand as the backbone for the girls and they will make the girls to go out and get education as they wish and they will provide them freedom and uh, for this they should be aware of how beneficial a girl's education will be how beneficial a girl uh, becomes if she is educated as her own what are the changes she can bring in the society if she is educated a girls can uh, can look after their parents children why can't a girl can go out and get her education on her own she can get but the only problem is we were not allowing them to move out once give a chance to a girl to go out and uh, see what the society is she, i am sure that she will definitely bring a change in the society once a man was giving a speech on the fear of women and so he asked all the men in the crowd to join him up on the stage who feared their wives each every one of them except one man didn't join he sat didn't move a muscle and so the astonished speaker asked him yo man aren't you afraid of your wife at least if you don't you should respect her the man meekly responded i can't move she didn't allow me to move unless she returns so i raise up my voice not so i can shout but so that those without a voice can be heard as quoted by malala yousafzai women are half the society you cannot have a democracy without a women you cannot have a revolution without a women nor can you attain equality without her let me tell you an interesting story of mrs lela seth now you all might think who she might be well mrs lela seth was the first indian woman to be the chief justice in a state high court it so happened in the late years of 1958 that mrs lela seth trained under a senior before she could practice law and so she decided to get trained under the best of lawyers in town and thus she zeroed down to someone named Sachin Chaudhary when she finally met the guy she found out that he wasn't in favor of girls joining law and so he tried to dissuade her by telling her to go and get married when mrs lela say told her him that she was already married he then advised her to go and have a child and so she said to him that she already had a child he then said it's not fair for the child to be alone you should get another child well she then confidently smiled and said mr chaudhary i'm a mother of two children and so he requested her to join his chambers and said you are a young persistent woman and you will do good at the bar now how many girls like how many great women out there like mrs lela seth have been hindered in achieving their dreams how many of those brilliant ladies out there are directly or indirectly forced to accept men taking the upper hand women take they play multiple roles they switch identities and become sometimes the invisibilized sometimes they become the respected sometimes the feared sometimes they become the insulted and sometimes they become the survivors well how many of us drive or ride a bike here many of us do well there wasn't there was a time we couldn't do so but now no one even talks about it there was a time when we couldn't vote by ourselves females weren't allowed to do now how many of us here can vote many i suppose yes many of us do vote there was a time we couldn't do so as well you see women they play multiple roles in the society teenagers now need to be shown how to be the most of themselves they need to be shown to how to increase their self esteem 
they need they need to be shown that self confidence is the best accessory and it needs to be worn well now women need to know i as a woman and we all as a woman sitting here in this room and everybody out there needs to make a response needs to make a change we have a responsibility a responsibility towards our future daughters towards our future granddaughters we have to change the world in a way where they do not have to think about lack of opportunity where they do not have to think about diversity diversity shouldn't even be a topic i would like to conclude my speech by saying that we will create men who will empower women around us we will create men who will respect and honor women around them and give them opportunities thank you thank you so much so today's my topic is youth in our nation the name itself the nation which the youth which are the blocks of nation youth are the change who are the youth we are the youth you guys everyone are youth we can change the world you can change the world because for example if you need something in your home for example the regular and the easy example which you all experience in your life you ask something to your parents and you mess things in your home and your parents definitely will give you that is your power that is your will that is the strength and that is the way the way you fight for your things that is the change what you bring for yourself and same you have to bring for the nation the nation where you are and what nation deserves is that a change you can bring it you have to bring it we can bring it follow these three things you can we can we have to because nation deserves the change my theme is today the deserve what nation deserves and there are the two ways how we can help youth one is parents and other thing is government parents and government these these are the two ways to help youth government have to set a events like unemployment fights or uh, poor education institutes that is the way one way and other way is the parents to encourage youth to participate and guide them in every of their aspects of field and another thing is nowadays youth are facing many problems in because they need all the fa uh, facilities and encouragement from the parents and from the government itself because these these two are the support for the youth youth can do anything you can do it you have to do it so my only request is that bring a change make a change and make others to change doesn't mean like not forcing others might be someone be like why would i have to change some may be think that i live my life i'll be in myself why why of interfering in others you have to because what change you bring that is not only for you it is all for the india you are getting my point it's all for india because of you one whole indian youth are going to change they are they are going to get an opportunity in certain events certain opportunity is in that field so yeah i want everyone to be a change everyone to bring a change yeah as well i'll bring the change i have to bring the change and i will bring the change thank you my topic is about girl education so is girl education really that important so why are we here studying uh, some are here studying because they want to achieve something in their life some are here studying because of their parents some are here studying because that's how the cycle of the society works 10th inter degree and then get settled die in your old age what do you think of girl education is it clear? what if we are not educated what happens then all the girls here just imagine that you are not educated then what you'll get married so 
one day you'll get married and one day you'll face an argument with your husband then he he uses his ultimate weapon called you don't know anything just listen to me because you're not educated just because you're not educated you don't know anything oh god i don't know anything what should i do now instead of realizing then you have to realize now and study uh, many of the girls who don't realize that because like they don't have opportunity they have, they don't get the opportunity to uh, educate themselves many women don't know they have rights don't know they have to be educated they have a right to be educated so apparently some people can't understand this they can't understand like the women need to be educated what's the need in educating women in their point of view women like they have to do house chores and they have to do make babies and they have to like uh like leave the educated stuff to men in their point of view that's the world but no like in the present world everything is changing but in the past that's the only point of view everyone sees not only men even women thinks that's the only point of view women should live because there is no education everyone sees india needs to develop like wow bro india is not developing what should we do like see half the women are sitting at home with beautiful brains they are not using it they are not educating their brains what, what should we do then how can india develop i hope this changes in the future thank you asalo vidya ante enti vidya anaga gnanaanni abhyasinche prakriya విద్య జ్ఞానంతో పాటు ఇంకా మరి ఎన్నో ఇందులో సమకూర్చి ఉంటాయి కేవలం చదువుకోవడమే కాదు మనం అన్ని రంగాల్లో జ్ఞానాన్ని సం సంపాదించడం ప్రఖ్యాతిని సంపాదించడం పురాతన కాలంలో స్త్రీలకు పురుషులకు సమాన హక్కులు ఉండేవి విద్య కూడా అన్ని రంగాల్లో స్త్రీలకు పురుషులు కూడా విద్య సమానంగా అభ్యసించేవాళ్ళు కానీ మధ్యతర మధ్యతర కాలంలో వచ్చేసరికి స్త్రీలకి పురుషులకి చాలా తేడాలు వచ్చేసాయి స్త్రీలకు అంత ప్రాముఖ్య ప్రాముఖ్యత ఇచ్చేవారు కాదు గృహానికి వాళ్ళు బందీ చేసేవాళ్ళు చిన్న వయసులోనే వివాహం చేయడం బాల్య వివాహాలు చేయడం వల్ల వాళ్ళు ఎన్నో నష్టాలకి గురి గురయ్యేవారు ఉదాహరణకి మనము సావిత్రిబాయి పూలే గారిని జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకుంటే వారి త్యాగ ఫలి ఫలితంగా ఈ నూ నేటి కాలంలో మార్పులు వచ్చాయి మనం ఇంత స్వతంత్రంగా చదువుకుంటున్నాము అన్ని రంగాల్లో రాణిస్తున్నాము అంటే కేవలం ఎంతోమంది త్యాగ ఫలితమే మనం ఈ స్థితిలో ఉన్నాము నేటి కాలం గురించి మనం ఆలోచిస్తే మీరు నేను స్త్రీలు పురుషులు అందరూ కలిసి సమానంగా చదువుకుంటున్నాం అన్ని రంగాల్లో కేవలం చదివే కాదు క్రీడ విద్య సాంకేతిక ఇంకా అన్ని రంగాల్లో స్త్రీలు ముందు స్థా మొదటి స్థానంలోనే ఉన్నారు దానికి కారణం వా వాళ్ళ వాళ్ళ యొక్క కృషే స్త్రీల యొక్క విద్యకు మనం ప్రాముఖ్యత ఇచ్చి అన్ని విషయాల్లో స్త్రీలకి స్త్రీలకి ముందు మొదటి స్థానం ఇస్తే మన దేశం అభివృద్ధి చెందుతుంది చెందుతుందని నేను భావిస్తున్నాను మనం ఇంత స్వతంత్రంగా చదువుకుంటున్నాము అన్ని రంగాల్లో ముందుకు వెళ్తున్నాం కాబట్టి కాబట్టి మనమే కాదు మన ముందు తరానికి కూడా ఈ స్వాతంత్రాన్ని పంచాలి మన తల్లిదండ్రులు మనకెంతో స్వేచ్ఛను ఇచ్చారు ఆ స్వేచ్ఛని దుర్వినియోగం చేసుకోకుండా అన్ని విషయాల్లో ప్రయోజకరంగా మారాలని కోరుకుంటూ సెలవు తీసుకుంటున్నాను జై హింద్here to speak on topic my dream india with the focus on atmanirbhar bharat before i have seen many speakers and they have all spoken about women and girls education so i thought i have to step in to speak about our country where we, i I, th- i thought of changing the environment present here when i searched on where about atmanirbhar bharat program there are uh, when i kept scrolling there are only numbers i can see like percentages population and these all so i didn't understand anything what it is about so but i am here for you all to tell what exactly atmanirbhar bharat is in as simplest way as possible youth is really playing a main important role here so i have i have only 10 fingers i can't do anything with these fingers by myself but with these 10 fingers i can drag you all to move towards atmanirbhar bharat i can pull one and that one one will pull another like that we will all the students of age 18 to 24 can come with me and 
step forwards to making a uh, atmanirbhar bharat then i know, got to know that yesterday narendra modi ji our prime minister has visited iit kanpur and he said today's youth will be the main will give the main contribution of work in the year 2047 so at the at our 100 independence i want my india to be atmanirbhar bharat and my i want my dream india with where all the men and women raise their voices against truth without fearing to happen thank you one and all मैं उस देश की नागरिक हूं जहां सम्राट अशोक छत्रपति शिवाजी जैसा राजा था मैं उस देश की नागरिक हूं जहां हर पचास मील पर रंग रूप पहनावा मजहब बदल जाता था मैं उस देश की नागरिक हूं जहां डाल डाल पर सोने की चिड़िया को पाया जाता था मैं उस देश की नागरिक हूं जिसे अपने भूगोल से पहले सारे ब्रह्मांड का भूगोल समझ आता था अ वेरी मैग्निफिशेंट मॉर्निंग टू एवरी सोल ग्रेसिंग हेयर This is Firdos Ansari from BA HEP. I am going to speak on my dream India with focus on Atmanirbhar Bharat. Every one of you at some or the other point have dreamt of India what would what would it be if you would rule it isn't it? Did you? Today I am here presenting my dream India. India of my dreams. where the bell of happiness rings where the birds in harmony sings my dream india will be self sufficient agriculturally developed technologically better and it will be self reliant every barren land will witness the crop growing from its womb and agriculture will be developed so that the gdp of our country pushes forward the main pillars of the self reliant india are governing bodies vibrant demography and economic infrastructure governing bodies will no longer be following the rules of past and they will be enhanced towards the technology the economic infrastructure will be developed and we does not have the incremental changes but with the quantum jumps we will have a country which is not segregated based on caste or class we will have a country which is united my dream india will have the social harmony peace and unity in it every chotu in the tea stall will be educated every one will be given the equal education the rich poor middle class every one will reap the benefits of the society equally national income will be distributed among them equally and there will be no separation among them my dream india will give the people opportunities and open the doors for them to various skills that will enhance my india and push forward it to the growth and development which will make the india uh, and set a very unique remark on the global level with this i conclude india has shaped me anchored my thoughts influenced my belief and india matters to me and i like to matter to my india thank you today my topic is on girls education imagine this world full of half half a flower half a sun half your favorite movie half your face and even half your school how would the world look how would the world look incomplete or imperfect so how can we even think of sending half the children to school and half the half the children keeping at home or keeping half the children at home and or half other half in the playground that is how defective it is when we think of boys sent to school and girls kept at home being deprived of education when we talk about girls we talk of uh, we talk about half of the population half of those people who are powerful talented and resourceful we may have, uh, a lot of us not may have heard the person famous personality james russell lowell but 
well, what he says is really very interesting. He says, the best academy is the mother's knee. Do you all agree to it? Yes. Do you all agree to it? Yes. I do. Because all my lessons, whether at school or in the playground, are coated with moral values and virtues that be my instinct and teach me what is the correct way of doing something and what is not. Who makes it possible? My mother. Who is the mother? Mine or yours or anybody else's. She is but a girl of yesteryears. Now imagine that this very girl herself was uneducated. Now she had never gone to any of the schools, remained at home and never, uh, never gone to any of the schools and learned to cook and clean that it. Would you be where you are today? Would you be where you are today? No. Yes, I completely agree with him. So, if, uh, when you want an educated generation to follow you and think how, it, uh, how important it is to educate the girls. Now, we can see around the world, the women and girls of our nation are representing India at national and international levels, such as PV Sindhu, Sanya Mirza, Saina Nehwal, and the now Miss Universe, Hanna Sandhu. Here to speak on the topic, New She, a futuristic view of modern Indian women. At the beginning of 19th century, the condition of Indian women was not encouraging. Several evil practices such as sati, child marriage, female infanticide made their life quite miserable. Most girls had to get married after attaining puberty and look after their husband, children and in-laws. But as the times changed, slowly but surely the status of women increased. Today we have Indian women who got their rights and they are treated equally to men. The girls in India are being educated and I hope that all the girls in future will be educated. The future she will be empowered, educated and conquering every single field and excelling at it. They don't have to wo uh, worry about their safety and they can work freely. Thank you. The Youth Talent Hunt program organized by All India Radio. This program has been awakening for students like us. The various topics which were spoken by different participants gave us insight into the different issues of our country and the solutions for them. Topics like Atma Nirbhar Bharat, education for girls, a new perspective on modern women, how youth played a major role in the country. All these topics gave us a far insight into how we are capable of changing our country and leading the way for a, more, for a better developed country. And I believe these perspectives will enable us to emerge as a strong nation and will help us to play a major role in the development of our country. And I believe all the words spoken by the participants and all the words heard by the audience will not go waste and it will help us to think and act for the development of our country. I especially thank the director Uday Sankar sir, station director of AIR and uh, Doodarshan team and AIR team, the staff members and also the our judges, uh, Kanaka ma'am, Krishnavini ma'am and Vishnupriya ma'am and also Niharika ma'am. And I also thank uh, our sister principal, Dr. P. Amruta, for organizing this event and a special mention to Brahmara ma'am and the Department of Pol Political Science for uh, arranging this program and enabling us to listen to all these uh, various different topics and helping us to think about it and giving us an opportunity to find ways to, for the better development of our country. And thank you. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebrates the rapid strides that India has taken in the past 75 years. It encourages us to rediscover our hidden strengths and prompts us to take sincere, synergistic actions to regain our rightful place in the Committee of Nation.